are you a critic of your own ano, film? Kapag ka, pinapanood yung sarilo on screen, lalo na yung mga ganyan kasela ng mga pelikula, are you parang, ah, dapat di ko ginawa ito, dapat ginawa ko ito? May ganun ba kayong ano, ah, thoughts in your mind while watching the film? Especially, parang kasama niyo yung cast members nyo doing it, eh, di ba? Uh, Nico. Thank you, Alan. Um, when I was watching, I always say when I watch my own films, the more I don't recognize the person on the screen, the better I did. But if I do recognize the guy on the screen, you all satisfied. So for this film, um, I didn't recognize him. He was super bastos, he was super gago. He, like, he was just an asshole that I got. Like the worst person that you could ever witness. And, I, and that's what I wanted. So when I saw that guy on the screen, I was like, okay. I did an all right job in this film. Thank you, Alan. How about, look, your most dramatic scene, <laughs> especially in the last part, you know? I couldn't watch the last part. Um, so, it, it was a while ago that we filmed uh, Sandwich, so actually, some of those scenes that came up, I completely forgot that I did them. Um, but watching myself on the screen, I, I don't have any problems with that. It's, it's a chance for me to critique myself. Um, to, to understand where I can also improve on my own acting skills, um, but the, the the kind of the climax scene um, was just personally hard hard to watch, uh, just because it during the during the shooting uh, it was very intense, um, very psychologically draining as well. Um, so, but the, the scenes before, the scenes after, just the, the movie in general was. Um, it was fantastic to watch and critique myself. How about Andrea? Um, so, I agree with Nico. Like, the more you don't recognize yourself, the better you know what you're doing. But I'm fairly new in the industry. I don't think I've been in showbiz yet for a year. Um, so, every project is definitely still a learning curve for me. Um, we did shoot that a couple while back, but yeah. So, I think not only me, but a lot of us um, who do enjoy our craft, like the process of acting as well, we really do try and think on where we can get better or if we did good at certain things. Thank you. I always take it as a learning experience. Like, syempre, I'm proud of the outcome, but as actors, we always want to improve and get better. So just finding little things that I think I could have done better and applying that onto the next project is always important. For the right job, uh, you previously apologized for the film being heavy in English. Are you worried about your audience or did you take any consideration for the typical Vivo Max viewers? Well, for me, kasi it's an opportunity to tap uh, a wider group of audience. Eh. So, uh, syempre, may meron tayong mga audience na hindi makikater. Pero, like, just like what I said, it's an opportunity to, to reach more audience. So, for me, it's, it's still a win-win situation. Uh, for the past, uh, in your opinion, is it okay to have a sexual fetish? And what's the strangest fetish you have heard of? Lahat naman ata tayo may fetish. It would be a lie to say na hindi. Um, and the strangest one I think would be armpits. Like I get a lot of messages on Instagram to show my armpits. So I guess that's one. I don't fetish at all. That's a good question. I don't know fetish. Uh, Maybe I won't disclose that. But, uh... <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> this is gonna get pretty crazy. No, I'm just kidding. I won't, I won't lay that on you. But, uh... I do have fetishes. Um, a good set of feet always turn me on. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... In terms of weird fetishes from others, yeah, I get people messaging me they want me to send pictures of my feet for a certain price. So not bad, right? Easy money. Uh, joke on. Uh, other fetishes, I mean, it really goes around. Kili Kili Talaga, I think, is one of the biggest fetishes in the um, And I've got some pretty hairy Kili Kili. I can show you later. <laughs> Wait, that's funny because I was about to say that the funniest fetish is foot fetish. Oh, no judgment. <laughs> um, 
I feel like normal naman that everybody has a certain fetish or kink. Kasi lahat naman tayo may naughty side. So I don't think it's a bad thing. I feel like mas tabu lang yung sa iba and every, the others is just out in the open. Okay, thank you. So I would agree with Amber. Uh, we all have a fetish in one way or another. Not necessarily sexual, uh, sometimes emotional fetishes. Personally, for me, I have a fetish for the eyes. Um, not a sexual fetish, but I'm a hopeless romantic when it comes to the eyes. The weirdest fetish I've probably come across, not personally in my life, but ones that I've known about since my family are uh, kind of in the medical field, are discarded toenail clippings. Really? Yeah. It, I, yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> kind of gross, but each to one side. <laughs> That's crazy. Mikhas, paano kayo nakapag-adjust doon sa noise clip style ni Dele? It wasn't the first time for me naman po, and I, like Derek Jaw said, it's more collaborative and it's more freedom for us as actors to really be in the moment and take it in as it comes. Yeah, I just want to add to say it. Uh, ako, as an actor, and, and you know, when I started taking drama and theater arts in, at UCLA, growing up, I was always taught to like the script is like your Bible, right? You carry that around like it's a Bible. But I need this in film. Uh, first time from my work with Derek Brilliant and Derek Jao here at Center Stage. So and the pressure, ako, I won't lie. Like I was sitting in my condo three weeks before the project, thinking like, well, what can I do to prepare for this? Because there's no script, right? So I'm like, what do I do? Like. And then, don't want to realize that uh, it comes from within. So I, I looked at myself in the mirror, I'm like, okay, who, who do you want to be in this film? I don't care if they're more. And I said, okay, I have to go out and do something. I have to go and experience something. So I thought, okay, you care if you're a smoker shop. So I'm in BGC, right? It's a BGC alone. No time. Okay, I'm going to go to the only smoking spot in BGC where all the call center agents huddle around and have a smoke so I break the gut, right? And I'm not thinking, I don't, I don't have a smoke, so I go to the 7-Eleven and I buy a pack of smokes. Mancha Mahal, I got worth it. So I get there, and then I, I actually offer them a smoke. I say, Kusamo uh, Makyosi, I'll give you as many as you want. So I, I watch them smoke one by one. And, and no weird I don't see that, I can tell them, like, this guy is super creepy, like, he's watching me smoke. Uh, I'm by myself, it's at like, it's 12 a.m. at night, right? I look like a stalker that I got, but I was watching their get out, like how they would smoke, how they would inhale the smoke, how they would breathe it out. Uh, so things like this, Naman, I really, really enjoyed the process. Super I enjoy all the people's film because um, it brought something out of me that I've never seen before, and that was because we don't work with scripts here. Lahat natural, lahat instinctual, lahat based on character mode. So you really have to focus on your character that I got. So that's one thing, I think that was the main lesson for me. Uh, here at uh, Center Stage. Thank you, Paul. Questions? We have Bernard Santos of My Movie World. Um, hello, good evening, Paul and Matt. Um, my first question is for the cast. Now that uh, you've watched uh, the full film already, uh, what's your takeaway or lesson learned um, about the message of the film? Let's start with, uh, with Nico. Well, hats off to the next really, and the next job. This, this is the first time I've seen it. and. Uh, because they look without being script, right? So I honestly had, other than my character, a new purpose and character, character goal, without my ideas, the overall plot. So when I saw it today, I realized, oh, well, this really has a lesson. Um, and it's, it's directly based on relationships. Um, but I'm a relationship, we all get bored at some point in a relationship, right? We all reach that wall. Uh, and once we reach that wall, what are we gonna do? Are we just gonna run into it and knock ourselves in the head? Or are we gonna try to jump over? We have to figure out ways to get around it, right? So Ego, um, Kat and Luke obviously are getting more of each other or in their sex life, so they're looking to bring in a third party. Now, is that the right decision? Uh, if if board gets a relationship always, do you think you should have sex with a third party? That's a personal question, and you're you're um, allowed to give your own personal answer, right? But as I think, um, my lesson here, because of film, is uh, when you experience problems in your relationship, don't look outward, look inward. Because that, that's, that's where your answer is. Um, focus on working on your relationship with your partner. 
Not getting third parties involved, because once you get third parties involved, that's when everything goes to shit. As you, as you saw in the film, right, it was kind of like, it was a downward spiral. And they had the problem with, uh, with Andrea. That was, although I was, I was karma. I was, the fact that they tried to fix their relationship by bringing a third party, I was karma telling them, you guys fucked up. You made a bad decision, and I am your karma. You, you, that's my lesson. I guess my biggest takeaway is that, in general, um, to actually think before you do anything, because every everything you do has a result, may it be good or bad. So to act less impulsively and to reflect before you do as, do or decide something. Okay. Um, I guess a few would be. Number one, safety is utmost priority. Make sure if you are engaging in things or situations like this, na kilala mo kung sino man yung mga kasama mo. And another one would be communication. Always know to voice out your feelings. Wag nang antay na magka burst out like what Rhea and Edward have had. Um, like make sure you're able to speak out your opinions or if you have anything on your mind, just speak to your partner about it. Uh, I have to agree with what everyone else has said really on the subject, but in addition to that, be because of the way that it played out in the end, um, when, when Candace had left, um, there was still a sense of, of safety there. Yes, they'd engaged in a threesome, which had ultimately not gone so well, um, but in that spur of the moment decision on Edward wanting to try and fix the situation without thinking, brought in a stranger, and as Nico said, that was karma coming to bite him in the ass, bite them both in the ass, really. Okay. Um, for my last question, may direct um, job. Direct, because the character of my husband is um, very complex and uh, psychological attack. So how do you uh, motivate them in order for to die in the character? I don't think uh, I needed to motivate them. I think they you know their assignments naman. So I trust them na 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 gusto ko sarili nila eh. Alam ko ayoko na parang lahat ako. Kasi for me, parang art lang diba? Parang mas, mas okay, mas, mas fulfilling outcome pagka, pagka there are more minds working towards them. One piece of art. Diba? So ako, yun lang. I, I just trust them. So I, I, di ako yung like, I'm just going to feed her a lot. You know, but I'm going to know. All right. Thank you, guys. And congrats. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That was Bernard Santos of My Movie World.